Okay guys, today we're gonna try to build the best Croatian starting 11. Croatia is pretty new to the football world. They don't have a ton of history, but in like the short history that they have, they've made like pretty far. And I know 2018, they got the World Cup final, which they lost, but that's still very impressive for a team that you wouldn't think would make the World Cup final. They have had a lot of really good players, so let's just kind of check this out. Also, shout out to buildlineup.com. They have a super simple site that you can build football formations and stuff. It's super cool. They have an app too. Makes it super easy to use. It's free. I'm not sponsoring anything, but you know, if you want to build stuff, have some fun. Check it out. I'm going to use Wikipedia just to show you guys this couple stuff. Also, disclaimer, I'm going to slaughter some of these names, so I apologize for him. First off, goalkeeper. So this guy right here, Vladimir. Era. So this guy played from 47 to 64. He technically played for the Yugoslavian national team, but he is Croatian, so I think they'd be fair to include him into this list. Yeah, look right here, he played for Red Star Belgrade, four Yugoslav First League titles, two Yugoslav Football Cup, silver medal in the Olympics in 1952, and then also played for Hajduk Split, which I feel like a lot of these old Croatian players played for and won the First League four times. And then also, this is kind of cool, I just saw this, but Lev Yashin, the only goalkeeper who received the award Ballon d'Or in 1963, said, I am not the best goalkeeper in the world. It is Vladimir Berra. Arguably the best goalie ever, Lev Yashin, straight up said, I'm not the best, this guy's the best. And so I think that kind of kind of gives you the, the spot in our starting 11, which you say, that's my opinion. So we're gonna put him right there, Berra. Next player, we're gonna go, let's move to right back. Right back's gonna be this guy, Dario Serna. Uh, played right back, most of the time played for Shakhtar Donetsk. Apparently he got offers from like Chelsea, Bayern, but he declined because he was pretty loyal to, to Shakhtar, which is pretty impressive. Popularly dubbed the icon of Shakhtar, so you're like the main guy at Shakhtar. He played there for, for 15 years, a long time. Yeah, like how many times he won the Ukrainian Premier League? 10 titles, eight Ukrainian Cups, Eight Ukrainian Super Cups, won the Europa League one time in 2008-2009, Champions League Team of the Season, Europa League Team of the Season, Heart of Hadjik Award in 2003, Best Ukrainian Premier League Player two times. Yeah, this guy definitely deserves to be the starting right back for, for our Croatian team right here. So right back, we're gonna go Dario Serna. We're gonna move on to the center backs now. So, first guy, Igor Tudor. So this guy played a lot of his career for Juventus, which is pretty impressive in my opinion. If you play for you, if you play for any of the big clubs as like a small, from a small footballing country, that's pretty dang impressive. And so playing for Juve is a big deal. Two Serie A titles, two Super Coppa Italiana titles, Serie B when they were relegated in 2006-2007, UEFA Intertoto Cup in 99, Champions League runner-up, Coppa Italia runner-up twice, third place FIFA World Cup in 98, and was also the Croatian Footballer of the Year in 2001. So it says a lot, this guy's, this guy's pretty dang good. And so he's gonna go right there as center back. Okay, next player is Slavin Bilic. And once again, he's from Hadjik Split. I feel like most of these Croatian guys started off the Hadjik Split, which is kind of cool. I guess they got a good academy. But he played in the 80s and 90s. Hadjik Split for most of his career. Also went on to play in the Premier League, West Ham, Everton. He played uh, in the World Cup in 98, which they took third place. Uh, played in the Euros in 96. This dude apparently had a lot of controversy, but honors. So yeah, with Hadjik Split, they won the Croatian First League, Yugoslav Cup, two Croatian Cups. Uh, the Croatian Super Cup, third place World Cup in 98, and as an individual, Player of the Year in 92, uh, multiple Croatian Football of the Year awards by Croatian journalists, and lots of other awards too right there you can see. Yeah, I think he definitely deserves to be in Bilic as our, as our other center back right there. Okay, moving on to the next position, this guy, Bronko Zebic. Zebic played quite a long time ago, back in the 50s and the 60s. Played for Yugoslavia. This is kind of cool. Zebic was world of class, whether on the left wing or in the more defensive role of the left fullback, although he was capable of playing almost every output position on the pitch. So this dude can play anywhere. 
You can put him anywhere on the pitch and he knows what he's doing. But I'm going to put him at left back just because that's his more natural position seems like. He was particularly well known for his pace, having been able to run 100 meters 11 seconds with football boots. So this guy is stupid fast. Played for a lot of local teams including Partizan Belgrade, Red Star Belgrade, Yugoslav national team, honors, Yugoslav cup in 52, 54, 57 with Partizan. Won the Yugoslav first league with Belgrade. Can be a manager for a little bit after that too and did pretty well. Yeah, Bronko Zebic is going in that left back. Okay, let's move to our midfield then. Let's stick on the left side since we're already here. You know, like, why not? Left mid, I'm gonna put Zvonimir Boban. This guy is a sweat. Started off at Dynamo Zagreb, played 10 years at Milan. Yeah, normally, normally an attacking mid, but he also played winger. So we're gonna put him at left mid. If you look at some of his honors, like with Milan, four Serie A titles, three Super Cup Italianas, won the Champions League in 94, won the Super Cup in 94, was the FIFA World Youth Championship Silver Bowl in 87, two-time Croatian Footballer of the Year. He's on the Ballon d'Or shortlist in 94, which is pretty impressive. If you make Ballon d'Or shortlist, you are, you can play. That's all I'm gonna say. So Zvonimir Bovan is gonna go into our team. I'm gonna put him at left mid. Next guy, next guy's gonna be a no-brainer. This guy's gonna be an absolute no-brainer. In my opinion, the best Croatian footballer ever, uh, Luka Modric. I don't even know what to say. There's not really much to talk about Luka. Uh, he, yeah, then was a grab over Tottenham, and now he's been at Real Madrid since 2012. He's 36 years old, and the man is still one of the best midfielders in the world. I'm just gonna go through his honors real quick. At Dino Zagreb, won the league three times, Croatia Cup twice, Super Cup once, Real Madrid three times, won the Liga, Copa del Rey, four Super Copa de Espanas, five Champions Leagues, that's insane. Three UEFA Super Cups, won the Club World Cup four times, runner up in the World Cup in 2018, and individually, like, look at, I don't, I'm not even going to go through all of these, but look at all of these honors as an individual that Modric has won. Like, that is ridiculous. You can take the time to look through that on your own. But the only one that I want to mention is right here, Ballon d'Or 2018. This guy won the Ballon d'Or. He's the only Croatian player to win Ballon d'Or. And a lot of people say maybe it wasn't deserved. Maybe it should have been Ronaldo. But, you know, it doesn't matter. He's sitting at home with the Ballon d'Or trophy in his cabinet. So, there's no way that Modric doesn't deserve to be in this starting level. All right, this next pick might be a little bit controversial, but I think this guy is severely underrated. Ivan Rakitic, this dude played at Schalke, Sevilla, Barcelona, and I'm back at Sevilla again. We made tons of appearances for Croatia. Look at some of the honors. This guy's won almost everything that you can win. Four La Ligas of Barcelona, four Copa del Reyes, two Super Copa de Espanas, won the Champions League in 2015, won the UEFA Super Cup that year as well, and the Club World Cup, won the Europa League before that with Sevilla, won the Swiss Cup right before that. And individually, like he just, he can play. Swiss Super League Young Player of the Year, Goal of the Season, La Liga Fair Player Award, Player of the Month, two-time La Liga Team of the Season, UEFA La Liga Team of the Season, Europa League Team of the Season, Champions League Team of the Season, Croatian Football of the Year in 2015, FIFA FIFA Pro World 11 third team in 2018. This dude knows how to play. And so Rakitic, I think he's severely underrated. And a lot of people are like, oh, he was never the best player on his team. No, he wasn't. But that's because he was on the best team in the world at Barcelona at the time. And you're, you're going to get overshadowed by like Messi, Suarez, Neymar, those guys. But this guy deserved a spot on that team. There's a reason he was there. And there's a reason those teams won. I think Rakitic definitely deserves a position right there. Okay, right mid, we're going to play Robert Prosinecki. And this is kind of cool. He's one of the few footballers that played for both the Spanish rival clubs, Real Madrid and Barcelona. If you play for both Barca and Madrid, I'm gonna give you props because that's ballsy to do. Plus it means you gotta be pretty good. Honors, um, when he played for Red Star Belgrade, won the league three times, Yugoslav Cup once, European Cup. Whoa, won the Champions League with Red Star Belgrade in 1990-91. That's impressive. Real Madrid won the Copa del Rey, Super Copa de España, Copa Iberoamericana in 94, Dino Zagreb won the league three times, the Croatian Football Cup once, Slovenian Football Cup individually, a lot of awards here too, Golden Ball for the Youth Championships, Best Young Player at the World Cup, FIFA World Player of the Year 4th place in 91, and was 5th place in the 1991 Ballon d'Or, which is insanely good. And then Croatian football of the year 97, so Prasinecki does, definitely deserves a spot. He's normally a central midfielder, but he can also play as a winger. And so we're going to move on to right mid and play a little bit wider with Prasinecki. The first of our striker pair, Bernard Vukas. 
So Vuk has played left wing, forward, extremely good dribbler. And I think the biggest thing, like the biggest reason why we're going to put him in our team is because it says right here in 2000, he was voted by the Croatian Football Federation as the best Croatian player of all time. And in a poll, he was voted the best Croatian athlete of the 20th century. So I honestly don't even need to say anymore, but that just kind of tells it for you. This guy is probably an absolute sweat. And so he's definitely going to go into our team. Honors, a couple honors right there. Won the Yugoslav League title three times, including 1950 where they didn't lose a single time. Dang, that's impressive. Silver medal at the Olympic Games in 48 and 52. Top goal scorer in the league. And he's got a statue too. Literally, he's got his own statue literally outside of the Hajik Split football grounds. Yeah, I'm not going to say too much about this guy, but two points to make. Best Croatian player of all time and has a statue outside of the Hajik Split Arena. I like it. Okay, last guy. This one's also a no-brainer. Davor Suker, one of the best Croatian strikers ever. Look at his senior career, Dino Zagreb, Sevilla, Real Madrid, Arsenal, West Ham, 1860 Munich to end his career. Let's look at some of his honors too. With Real Madrid, won La Liga in 97, Supercopa de España, won the Champions League as well, and the Intercontinental Cup. With Arsenal, was Europa League runner-up, World Cup third place in 98. Individually, he won the Golden Boot, the Silver Ball, and was on the All-Star team for the 98 World Cup. That's incredible. Ballon d'Or runner for 98. So other than Modric, no one has ever won the Ballon d'Or from Croatia. But this guy was the closest one. He was the runner-up, his second place, which he lost to Zidane. He lost that to Zidane, which is insane. And I'm not gonna read the rest of them, except for maybe this one, six-time Croatia Football of the Year, Croatia Team of the Year twice, FIFA 100 awards. So there, there's lots of other awards that are listed right there that he won individually. But Suker definitely goes up there as one of the best. If it wasn't for Modric, I think he'd be the best Croatian footballer of all time. But Luka Modric exists, so that can't happen. Anyways, this is the final team. 